for today's topic, we'll be talking about the check off. So yeah, here is the check off. Hold on a second. Okay, let's start the today uh, sharing section. So for check off, it is actually a device that will only that sorry. Check off is a device that only allow the free of the flow in one direction. Or we call this kind of valve as the unidirectional flow valve. And as the background over here show, show uh, there are actually few different kind of check valve which will be covered on today's topic. Next, working principle of check valve. For the working principle, check valve is actually a little bit different compared to other check of valve such as ball waft, gate waft, globe waft, uh, butterfly waft, and so on. What is the difference? So uh, here I have a sample to show you. Actually, for other type of waft, they will normally require operator. Like for example, ball waft, they will actually require a lever, as you can see over here, to open or close the waft. For gate waft, they will actually require a hand wheel to open or close the valve but for check valve they are actually don't have any uh, operator either lever or uh, hand wheel to open or close the valve check valve is actually considered as a self-acting valve so how check valve works for check valve they normally require a minimum upstream pressure to open the valve and allow the flow to pass through it as you can see in this video clip when there is a minimum upstream pressure flow through the uh, disc, it will actually push the disc away and create an opening for the free to pass through from the upstream to the downstream. This is how, how they work actually. They don't require any operator, but when there is a flow with a minimum upstream pressure, they will open and allow the free to pass through. And of course, oh sorry, uh, by the way, this minimum upstream pressure is normally what we call as the cracking pressure. So for this cracking pressure, it depends on the design and the size of the check wall. If the, the, if the size is larger, so the cracking pressure required will be larger as well. So do ensure that your system can generate this cracking pressure and is suitable for your application. Now what happens if the upstream pressure falls below the cracking pressure? So if this scenario happen, so the uh, when there's the uh, so if this scenario happen, then the dish will be moved down and the flow they will, will not be able to pass through because when there is not enough pressure to push the push the dish away, so of course the fluid will not be able to pass through from the upstream to the downstream. So in short, uh, in another scenario, when there is a back pressure from the downstream to the upstream, it will actually push the push the disc towards the, the seat which will also create the seal and prevent the fluid to pass through from downstream to upstream this is actually what we call as prevent the back, backward flow so this uh, function of the check valve can act as the prevent back flow also next installation orientation for the installation the check valve will normally be installed in one direction or we call it as a unidirectional flow. As a unidirectional flow valve, it is important for us to know the correct installation orientation. Oftentimes, there is an arrow, uh, this one, there will normally be an arrow uh, marked on the valve body to indicate the flow direction. Otherwise, we will need to examine the valve to ensure that it is, it is installed in the intended flow direction. Now what happens if, if let's say the arrow here showing that we should install in this direction but we, we install in another way of direction. So what will happen? When the scenario happens, the flow will actually not be able to pass through from the valve because as I mentioned just now, when there is a backward flow, it will close the, close the disc and not allowing any fluid to pass through. And also it will cause a build up of pressure and which will eventually cause damage to the valve seat and uh, the valve uh, will fill after a long time 
next sorry next let's look at a, a, a few different type of check valve due to the time constraint today we will only talk about the three common type of check valve used in the oil and gas industry which is swing check valve dual plate check valve and also piston check valve first let's look at the swing check valve for swing check valve the main component is actually body which is this one the disc over here the seat over here and the hinge pin oh sorry hinge pin now um in order for your better understanding on the components let's have a look on the video that showing the showing the assembly process so as you so here is the video as you can see seat ring and then the disc they will be installed through the top and then a, a washer or gasket and then we'll close the waft uh, bonnet using the start bolt and there you go here is the assembly process of a swing check waft everything will be installed from top uh, and then they will be closed uh, they'll be closed by the bonnet cover using the start bolt and nut next let's look at the working principle for a swing check waft it is a full port design and when the upstream upstream fluid pass through the disc will be pushed up and create an opening so as you see in uh, this video clip when the when there is upstream pressure it will push the disc away and create an opening and this this uh, this design is actually called a swing check wall as as the fluid continue the disc will uh, sorry the wall will remain open but when the flow start to slow down or maybe stop then the disc will move back to the seat position and create a seal now for the swing check valve they can be mounted in either vertical or horizontal position provided that this the disc is designed in such a way that it will not it will not uh, reach the stalling position where the disc we're stuck in an open position next application for swing check valve they are recommended for use in a system that use gate valve because of the low pressure drop across the valve uh, the body of the swing check valve is available in a Y pattern or strict body design for strict body design they normally have uh, this hinge at the top so that it will create a seal again the seat also for the swing check valve it can be used in application with a high percentage of solid and a low on off cycle for the advantage swing check valve they actually have a low turbulence and pressure drop also the seat ring inside the swing check valve is replaceable so if the seat ring has been damaged or have some uh, issue we can always replace the seat ring and uh, for the swing check valve because they have an angle seated surface so they actually permit the easier opening at the lower pressure next or oh, before that uh, for the swing check valve there is normally one concern which is uh, they will normally not be used with a high on off cycle situation because this will because the continuous flapping which means the open close open close this is what we call as continuous flapping will damage the sitting element so for the on off high high on off cycle not recommended to use swing check waft another type of waft is called dual plate check waft for dual plate check waft the main component is body body shaft spring and the sitting element which is the disc and the seat so here is another video showing you the uh, assembly process of a dual plate check valve let's have a look so this is the disc and it will be mounted to the central and then we'll put in the spring and then we'll put in the shaft and finally the the snut so this is actually how is the dual plate check valve looks like next 
let's look at the uh, working principle. For dual plate check valve, they normally employ two spring-loaded plates hinged on the central hinge pin, uh, which means this one. And then uh, when the flow decreases, uh, by the way, here is a video clip. So uh, when, uh, when there's a flow passing through the upstream, they will push the disc away and create an opening for the fluid to pass through. Now what happens when, uh, when the fluid has been reduced or even stopped? So the disc here will be closed by the spring, the torsion spring action. Because as you can see here, they actually have a spring. They will move the disc back to the original position. So this design will actually reduce the water hammer and slamming of the disc simultaneously. Next, let's look at the application. For dual plate check valve, they are non, they are non return check valve that uh, that is lighter in weight and smaller in size. As you can see just now, the size is a uh, very compact and that's why they have a very light weight and uh, smaller in dimension compared to the conventional swing check valve or maybe the piston check valve. And for dual plate check valve, they are ideally suitable for for a lot of uh, applications such as a flow line, manifold, pipeline transmission and distribution and so on. And the advantage of spring check valve, as I mentioned just now, they are very compact in design, so they can actually save a lot of space and the weight is low. So when there is a restriction of the space uh, on your site or on your platform, you, uh, you can consider this uh, dual plate check valve. Uh, the second advantage is uh, lower slamming rate compared to the swing check valve, because as I mentioned just now, due to they have a spring loaded plate at the central, they will help to reduce the uh, slamming effect. And of course, for the dual plate check valve, it will be easier for maintenance because they have uh, lesser parts. Next, let's look at the piston check valve. For piston check valve, the main component is a uh, body, the disc, the disc, and then the spring, and also the seat. Again, before we uh, proceed to the working principle, let's let, let's have a look on how they are and how they are assembled. So you can see over here the this the the, uh, the sorry the spring and the and the spring and the seat everything will be uh, mounted to the waft uh, sorry will be installed uh, will be assembled into the waft through the top and then after that we'll close it uh, using the stepo and nut next working principle for the for the piston check valve the seat design of a piston check valve is actually quite similar to a globe valve where the disc is usually in the form of a piston or a ball but for piston check valve they do not require operator like lever or hand wheel here is a sample showing you the glue valve and the piston check valve. You can see they are actually quite similar where uh, they, have a, they have a plug over here. You see both also have the same similar design. But for glue valve, they actually require a hand wheel to open or close the valve. Whereas for the piston check valve, they do need any operator to open or close the valve. Okay, for however, for piston check valve, the flow must always enter from the uh, from below the seat, which means in uh, this direction, the flow must always enter from this direction, so that the flow can push the this, uh, sorry can push the this upwards to create an opening of the valve. Now imagine if the flow is from another direction, which is uh, here. If the flow is coming from here. What will happen? So the fluid will actually push this uh, seat. Uh, sorry, will push this uh, this towards the seat and create a strong seal. So there will be no fluid able to pass through the valve. Okay, hold on. Uh, there's um. Okay, so as the as the flow ender, the piston will be pushed up 
within the body guide uh, which is uh, sorry which is this one here is the body guide the it will it will actually serve as the proper alignment for the teeth and the seat so this body guide will help to do the proper alignment so when the foot pass through they will push up the disc to uh, upwards and when there's no flow the disc will come down and sit on this uh, body guide next next is uh, application okay for the application piston check valve are normally used in conjunction with uh, globe and angle valve in the piping system which experience uh, very frequent changes in the flow direction high pressure service where the velocity flow is very high and normally for this kind of valve they can be used in uh, water steam or air system for the advantage spring loaded uh, sorry piston check valve uh, may be installed in uh, any position I mean in uh, both vertical and horizontal uh, uh, position and the spring will help to reduce the noise minim minimize the effect of the slamming effect and also assist the closure member to close faster uh, for, for piston check valve there's one concern where when, uh, when the valve is used for 30 media the, uh, we should proceed with cautious because the media might cause the disc to settle inside the body cavity next advantage and disadvantages of check valve for check valve there are actually quite a number of the advantages such as they can prevent the back flow because when the flow is coming from another direction the check valve will automatically stop this is what we call as a prevent back flow they are able to endure a high and low pressure condition they are able to perform as a backup and a safety system like for example when uh, you are using a pump, pump, uh, pump, pump application you don't want to have any back flow from the pipeline so normally we will install this, uh, the, uh, for, uh, this in, we will install this check valve to prevent the back flow and also to serve as a safety system and for the uh, advantage number four is the self-actuated and fast acting because for the uh, check valve they do not require any operator so basically they can be act in a very fast time and like i mentioned just now another advantage is they can prevent the water hammer and also for check valve they have a lower maintaining cost due to they have a way less component inside the valve for this advantage of check valve, they are not suitable to be used in a high on-off cycle application because the, the, normally the, the seat will be damaged by a high on-off cycle situation. For the closing element, closing element can slam close during damage and wear. And number three is impossible to check or uh, impossible to check if they are open or closed position because for check valve we do not have an operator to identify whether the check valve is in open or closed position and of course the, uh, the, there, there might be a noise from slamming the disc and a reverse flow pattern issue next uh, there are a few common design standards used uh, for check valve uh, like API, ISO and Europe standard for oil and gas industry, the most commonly used one will normally be uh, API, uh, in which is uh, this API 594. So basically, these are my uh, content for today for the check walk topics. So if you have any question, feel free to drop your comment at the, at the comment section and we will address to it later. So uh, as the uh, as the COVID-19 cases has been rise quite significantly recently, I hope everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we shall see you again in the upcoming lunch learning section. And that's all for me. Thank you. Bye-bye.